Okay guys, uh, sheet four, solids and contact. So you've got a sphere sitting on the ground, point P, with projections of a second sphere, which is in contact with the horizontal plane and point P. <clears throat> okay, so the first thing I'm gonna say there anyway is, if you chop off i'm gonna just use horizontal sections if you chop there's our sphere sitting on the ground if we take a cut through point p if we chopped that off horizontally it would give us a circle that point p is on and i'm going to do that first so imagine just chopping through that at that height in the top view it's going to give me a circle of this radius no i don't need to draw it all but i suppose i will just to kind of help people understand it so that would be this And we know P is on it. So that is point P. And later on, when we do find our sphere, it's going to be on this line out here, because that's our point of contact. But, now the next problem there though, we need to operate beside the sphere. So if you bring the height of the point of contact out to here, I'm gonna just put in a P there for the point, point of contact. Okay, so somewhere out here, somewhere out here is a sphere that touches the sphere, the big sphere, and sits on the ground. And we need to find the center of that. But you can't just guess, all right? You can't guess. Now, you, uh, you, you could make a damn good guess if you stayed at it with trial and error, but you've got to find a way of doing it. Now, I'll take you back there for a second to if this was a cone and we wanted, we would bisect the angle and we would come off at 90 degrees from our point P and that's it. So if it was a cone, we would be bisecting the angle and the problem with this is how do you bisect the angle between a line and a circle. So um, I'm going to show you that now. So I'm just going to get rid of that sketch that I put in there just to, to help you understand the problem. Okay, so, and the answer to this is low size. So I'm going to again just sketch what I'm going doing here. So, if I took a point 10 above the ground, and then if I swung an arc 10 outside the circle, that's a point. And if I did now 15, so a line up 15, and an arc out 15, that's another point. And I might go less there, I might just go 5 up from the ground, 5 outside the circle. And this, when you bisect, between the ground and a circle, you get a curve. So that, that that's a bisecting curve, right? So anywhere on that curve, you're the same distance from the circle as the ground. That's what we need to do. So I'm going to go with maybe, I'm going to go with maybe 
5, 10 and 15. Five, ten, and fifteen. So this is a line five above the ground. This is ten above the ground, and that's fifteen above the ground. Now, what I want to do next is I want to add five, ten, and fifteen onto the circle. So five. 10, 15 onto the circle and I'm going to swing these arcs now so 5 outside the circle is here that's our first point then 10 outside the circle is here and 15 outside the circle is here. So I'll put this in now in color maybe to help us understand or see it. So so if this was my bisector between a cone, this is my bisector here between That's my bisector between the sphere and the ground. It's, it's called a locus. It's the path of all points that are the same distance between the ground and the sphere. And since we know that it has to be straight out from here, that is the point we're looking for. So if I put my compass there, and draw that sphere it should be just touching at P and touching the ground so that is the we now have the radius that we wanted so we've done that was the radius we wanted. So now the same, the usual stuff now, it's at the side and we don't want it at the side. We need it close around to the front. So I brought it down. I'm going to roll it around. So this here is my final center and plan. I'm going to bring that up. I want to bring the height of that sphere across and that there is my final center in elevation so I shouldn't have drawn that sphere so heavy there because it wasn't the final sphere but I did want you to see what I was doing so So here is our final position. And down in plan, it's here. So the center point of contact is just inside. Here's our center point of contact. Now question two, you have shown is a pictorial view of a cone in contact with a sphere. Complete the projections of the sphere, which is this one, and show the point of contact between the cone and sphere. Okay, so that's the first thing that we're asked to do. So let's do that for starters anyway. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to roll that uh, sphere out to the side of the cone. So I'm going to bisect again there. I 
I just extended out the horizontal plane there because I want to do this bisector big so that it's accurate. So we're just bisecting the angle between the side of the cone and the ground. So here is our bisector and we know the center must be here. So that is our center and just go perpendicular to the side of the cone, 90 degrees off the side of the cone. And that is the height of the point of contact when it's at the site. Now I could draw the sphere there, but I'm not going to bother because we've looked at this now enough times. So bring it down to the plan. Here's the center. Here's the point of contact when they're beside. And then I'm going to roll the sphere around. And I'll also roll the point of contact while I'm at it. And we know if the sphere is here in elevation, it has to be straight down and plan. So that is this is the final position for my center. And this is my point of contact. And I can bring up the point of contact now and bring the height across. So here's the point of contact. And finally now just drawing the sphere. So again, just draw it at the side, bring it down, roll it around. Now the second thing we're asked to do is locate a cylinder that touches the sphere and the cone. So now that's the point of contact on the ground. So here is the point of contact. So what we're being asked to do here now is put in a cylinder that is touching the sphere and around the back there touching the cone as well. Okay, so basically that would be the base of the cylinder there. Um, so we're drawing in a cylinder there that's sitting on the ground, but it's in contact with the sphere and the cone. So again, I'm going to project out through the, so the center has to be on this line. And again, then it has to be the same distance from the cone from the base of the cone and from the sphere here. So again, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do some low side. So I'm going to add on, uh, I'll start with 10 and 20. So I'm after adding on 10 and 20 to the base of the cone. And I'm also going to add on now 10 and 20 onto the sphere here. So be careful here now, I'm adding 10 outside the sphere. 
and 20 outside this field. And I'm just going to swing these arcs. So 10. And I'll do them one at the time here now so you'll see what I'm at. So 10. And 10 gives me this point. Now I'll do 20 now on to outside the base of the cone. 20 outside the sphere. And all the sun's coming out in a second. Okay, so that's a bit better. Okay, so 20 outside the sphere, 20 outside the cone. Oh my God. And that, that, that actually, by just pure fluke there, that's on the line, so I have the perfect answer, but uh, I'm going to just go 30 as well, just so you can see where this came from. So there's 30 outside the sphere, and I'll add, or that was 30 outside the cone, this is 30 outside the sphere, and I'll just swing that arc as well, so that's 30 outside the sphere here's 30 onto the base of the cone and what that's giving us there now I'll use my green is the locus So that's the locus of every possible uh, cylinder that would be, so that, that would have been like, if I was to draw a circle from here now, that would be a cylinder, but it's too small. And if I drew one from out here, it would be a cylinder touching both that's too big, but the perfect sized one is here. So if I set my compass to here now, that should be just touching. So that's touching both the sphere and the cone. And did they give a height for that? Okay, now the height doesn't matter once it's taller than the center of the small sphere. So I'll just bring that up. And I'm gonna just make it the same height as the cone, I think. Just Okay, so there is our cylinder here now, and it's touching, and it didn't ask for a point of contact, I guess, but the point of contact between the sphere and the new cylinder is here, and that's going to be at the same height as the center of the sphere. So that would be here. That's the second point of contact. And the other point of contact is between the cylinder and the base of the cone, which is here. So best of luck doing that one. I'll move on there now to question. 
Now this question here, you've got a cone here and you've got <coughs> a cone at B. So the first thing I asked there is the two cones are in contact. So complete the projections of the cones. So I'm going to do that first. Now, because cones have to be in contact at the base, so you've got A is a tall cone and B is a smaller cone. But the point of contact is still on the ground at the base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide. I'm going to leave A where it is. And I'm going to slide B out here parallel. So if it was, I'm going to slide it over until it's beside it. Okay, so that's B you now moved to beside it. And now I can bring it down. There's the center when it's beside it. And I want to roll it around again. So there is the <coughs> center and because, I'll just draw that a bit heavier, make sure it comes out in the video. And because we know they're touching at the base, I can just set my radius to this because I know it's going to be the same as that. Okay, so I can just set it off the base here because that's where the point of contact is. So we now know here's the point of contact and that's on the ground. So here's my point of contact and there's his implant. Point of contact, that's this. So that's the first part of that done. Now, did I even need to slide it all the way over there? No, not really. But uh, just to kind of understand the idea, because I knew the base radius of B, and once you knew the base radius, I could have just measured it off of here, which is 15. And I could have just added that on here and rotated it around. So I didn't really need to slide the cone, but I just wanted to understand the idea of it. Now, the next part of this then, an inverted cone is touching both of these cones. Draw the plan and elevation of the inverted cone when given its point of contact with the cone A is point P. All right, now that's interesting. That is interesting. Okay, so P is here. Now before I'll start, look, we know the height of P. So basically, we're going to very quickly find out the height of that point of contact on cone A. So it's going to be something like this. And we're also going to know the height of it on B. And cone B is probably going to be more like this. A smaller, it'll be closer to the top. So it's going to be a smaller circle. And 
All we're going to be trying to do then is put in an inverted cone. Uh, that sketch isn't working out great now. I'll just move the point of contact. But we're going to be putting in an inverted cone like this that touches both of them and it's turned upside down. So I'll just colour in that inverted cone here now in green. It will help you to picture this. So because we know the height of the point of contact, we're going to be treating these more like circles really once we uh, like truncated cones I'll, I'll be thinking of it like as if I chop off the top so step one now thankfully our sun has gone back in again I can brighten this up a little bit hopefully Okay, so I'll just try and zoom in here now as well to capture this. So, <coughs> sorry. So I'm going to rotate, I'm gonna draw a circle through P here in plan. Now, that is going that is step one. That is that circle there. So I'm going to bring that up now. And that is the height of P. So there's our point of contact. on cone A and since so our point of contact over here it's going to be at this height so this is going to be quite small now which is a bit of a nuisance oh that's painfully small now tiny circle here Okay, I've, I've got enough of it anyway. So now what I want to do now is I want to do, uh, if, if we knew the center of this, it has to be the same distance from the point of contact. It has to be the same distance from point of contact here. And from the circle over here as well so now the other thing we know is that it's going to be out here as well so straight out from the center of this So it's going to be out here somewhere. So if I was guessing, like it's going to be around, I think it's gonna be out around here. If I was guessing now, so like I know it's gonna be like between 30 and 40 or something like that. So I'm going to start off now and I'm gonna be adding on the radiuses from here. So I'm gonna add them on sideways there. So I'll do maybe for starters, I might do a uh, 30 outside of that, and I might do 40 outside of that. So that's 30 and 40. And I'm gonna do the same over here now. I'm going to just, I'm going to come from here. I'm gonna put them going down the ways now, but I want to go, Forty and forty. Oh, so I'm basically measuring thirty and forty 
outside of that small circle uh, and after going 30 and 40 outside of the bigger circle there so I'll just put a line here and we'll measure so there's 30 and 40 and no by the way these are touching now so but I'm still swinging from the center of the cone though that's important so there's 30 outside swinging from the center of the cone so here is 30 outside both of them and here is 40 outside of both okay and that's enough there that actually was a decent guess now if i can credit myself i think that's right so it's probably not a straight line now that's going to be a, a curve but it's not going to be that far out so that there i've been putting my low side in in i really should have taken a third one there now but it's all right so that is the center of the inverted cone so when i put my compass here set that to the point of contact and it should be just it's a small bit inaccurate there now Okay, because ideally you know that should have been tangential to this and it's just a mil and a half out there but then that small small circle there you just can't draw accurate small circles from there on you true formal so that's the base of our inverted cone and I'm going to bring up there then Here's the left, here's the right, here is the center axis and the apex on the ground is going to be there because this is an inverted cone and we know that the height of this cone has to be at the height of the point of contact. So. I might put this cone in and color maybe. Uh, seeing as I use green over here, I might use green here. So here's our inverted cone. And plan. That's an elevation touching here. And as I said, small bit inaccurate there, but I wouldn't worry about it because it's the method is what counts and uh, there we go tricky enough question okay so this last one here is we've got <clears throat> an inverted cone so I'm going to just chop a horizontal section through that and find that point P in plan so if I chopped through that at the height of point P, that's the radius for the section. 
so it's going to be I won't draw the full circle now but it would be on that radius down here so that is P now usually we have it on the outside but just from reading the question okay what you've got here is let's see if I draw here's my vertical plane here's my horizontal plane this is an inverted cone and the question says there <clears throat> given the point of contact between the cone and the sphere oh yeah sorry shown the planned elevation of the vertical cone the sphere is in contact with the cone and the vertical plane oh yeah so i should have actually drawn this bigger now to explain what i want to explain so i'm just going to enlarge this but we're putting a sphere in here that's touching both the vertical plane and the cone so it has to be this is the edge view of the vertical plane here that line looking down from above so it has to be um it has to be on the inside and again if i took because we know the the height if i was to redraw this now and just say if i was to redraw this here now here's my horizontal plane here's my vertical plane if i chopped off the rest of the cone so we only had the height up to the point of contact if you can visualize that there's our point of contact forget about the rest of the cone because that's uh, a waste of time to us we only want the point of contact <coughs> so basically if you can picture that our locus we're going to draw a locus now between so we know if you put a horizontal plane if you could picture a horizontal plane going through there chopping the cone it basically we need the locus of distances that are let's say 10 out from there and 10 away from the or 20 or 30 equal distances from p and the vertical plane so i'm going to just again look i think the answer is going to be in around here somewhere so i'm going to start off with like maybe 20s so I, i'm going to go i'm going to go 20 and 25 and 30 bring the point of contact in here and I'm going to just come off here perpendicular and I'm going to just see if I put a sphere of 30 and I'll and our sphere of radius 20 so that would be a radius 30 sphere that would be a radius 20 sphere but you need to understand plan distances for this now so a radius 30 sphere and a radius 20 sphere now if the radius 30 sphere is in contact with the vertical plane it's the center is going to be out 30 so the center is going to be out 30 from the vertical plane and it's going to roll around the cone this far out from 
the center axis so that's the radius in plan out from the center axis so that there is thirty. okay so now I'm going to go with 20 so radius 20 is going to be 20 out from the vertical plane so that's 20 out from the vertical plane and if the 20 sphere was rolling around the cone it would be this far out okay okay so that's gone too small so i will go with um a bigger size so 30 is there 20 is here and there's a limit see there's a limit to to the sizes you can use that they cross so I'll just try a 15 and out 15 here so here's my So here is my uh, plan distance for the 15. Okay, and that's still too small. So uh, 30, 20. So I, th I think maybe wouldn't be that far out 30 20 it wouldn't be that far out to extend I should put that in in green here now and we know that it has to be in line with the point of contact here so I'm getting this and that sphere has to be touching the vertical plane so if i take that radius there which i'm getting there it's working out around 18 or 17 or something like that so that is the radius that I'm getting. I'm going to step that out there. So here is the sphere. So it's open the air a small bit, but that's okay. So that is the sphere I'm getting. And I'm going to just take the height of that across. And bring the center up so there is my center and that is the sphere